Hey guys, we had multiple, multiple problems on this job. Eric and I are here today and we got to get this floor poured. There's just, there's just no way that we can't pour it today. One of the problems we had was this is a, a double wide home. So they, they build the house elsewhere in a warehouse and then they truck it here and then they crane it on top of this foundation. The house is coming in two days. We had to get this floor done today because we can't we can't be here tomorrow. We got someplace else that we have to be scheduled for for tomorrow. We can't change the schedule. One problem was the house is coming in two days and we had very little notice about that. The second problem we had was we had a couple guys call in sick today. Darren and Luke just couldn't make it. They didn't feel good. Typically there'd be four of us here pouring this. Which, which with four, you know, four of us pouring this is very, very, very easy for us to do this. We're down to two guys, just me and Eric. You know, we just got to suck it up and get it done no matter what. That's the second problem. And the third problem was they didn't really backfill the outside of this foundation very well at all. The access was bad. And that's why we're using this conveyor truck. In order to get the conveyor truck, you got to give them quite a bit of notice because there's only one of them and everybody wants to use it we had to order the conveyor truck you know a good week in advance we picked this day to do it knowing that all right we got a couple days before the house is showing up and we can get the conveyor truck that was another problem right there if we had canceled today because a couple guys called in sick then we're not getting the conveyor truck tomorrow and i don't know you know we you can't get a pump truck on short notice either. It's usually a week or two before you can get a pump truck. It was just a matter of let's let's just get this thing poured and finished today and get it done. Um, and then move on to tomorrow. So that's kind of how we deal with problems. You know, they, they come up just about every day. Something comes up, maybe not quite to this magnitude where there could be multiple ones as far as scheduling goes. But... We, you know, if you're in construction, if you, you know what I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Nothing really ever goes perfect every single day of the week. It's just a matter of, okay, how do we deal with this today? What can we do to make this and get it done? That's what me and Eric are doing today. It, you know, it's going to take us a little bit longer to get this poured. And, you know, one guy can finish this pretty easily enough with a with a, the MBW power trials that we use. But as far as getting it poured, you know, it's nice to have it's nice to have a good crew of at least three, if not four guys here doing stuff like this. Especially when you do multiple ones a day, you know, five days a week, you're pouring every single morning, six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning. We like to have the whole crew on hand. It's rare that number one, it's rare that one of the one of these guys is sick. And I don't know if I've ever had to deal with two guys being sick on the same day. But Today was that day. You're gonna to get to see just how two guys tackle this. This is a 40 by 28 foundation, so about 1120 square feet. Uh, two trucks, 14 yards of concrete. We only really needed the conveyor on the first truck. So we, put, we put as much concrete as we could on the conveyor. Nine and a half yards is what he can carry legally over the roads. Even though his drum can hold about 11 yards, he'd just be overweight. We got nine and a half yards on the conveyor, then we got the rest, obviously, on the second truck. And we could get the second truck close enough to the other end, which you'll see in a minute, but we could just shoot the rest of it. But you can kind of see how that conveyor truck, that conveyor belt will reach about 40 feet. And then it, part of it does move back and forth about 10 feet. So that kind of makes getting the concrete where we need it a little bit easier for us. Instead of having to use a, you know, an extension chute and, and moving that around and pulling the concrete all over the place, the conveyor and the boot there put it pretty much where we need it. You know, if you think about it, a yard of, a cubic yard of concrete weighs about 4,000 pounds. <laughs> if you got 10 yards, it's 40,000 40, pounds of concrete sitting right there. And I don't know about you, but... I don't want to pull around 40,000 yards of concrete as little as possible, you know, especially when you do a lot of it. 
Now we use an MBW screed demon, the battery powered screed to get this screed. It's screeding it, screeding it's going to be as far as getting it level is kind of easy. We like to have two guys puddling, one on each side. Um, that way, that way one guy, although you can see Eric's doing a good job here because probably because he's done it so much, but with two guys, it just makes it a little easier. You don't have to keep going back and forth and back and forth. But this part of it worked out okay. Another thing we did was we added we added some high range water reducer into the concrete mix so we could pour about a six and a half, seven inch slump without having to add water to get it that loose. So the high range water reducer, you know, they add that right in at the batch plant. It costs three or four bucks a yard extra, but it's kind of like almost saves a man if you think about it. And then pouring the concrete this loose, it, it actually, without the water reducer, the concrete would actually slump out to about like a three. So it's still really strong, really, really uh, low water cement ratio concrete. But it stays loose like this for about an hour. So you get plenty of time to work with it with a water reducer in it. And I'll be honest with you, we use that every day. We use at least the mid-range. They can put different doses in and mid-range is about what we normally use because we usually pour around a six inch slump and then if if you want to go above a six inch slump then you usually add a little bit more and they call that a high range i don't know we've always had that where we pour here in the batch plants and there's probably three or four different concrete companies we use in the area and they all have it and a lot of them just add a little bit a little bit to the batch anyway without you even asking but if then if you want to go to a higher dose you just gotta add, add it there you can see the shoot from the other truck you can see Eric's having to work a little bit harder getting the concrete pulled down there it was a little bit high how do you think we're doing so far though for just two guys getting this down I mean I believe the first truck it took us it took us about 20 minutes to get it unloaded and then probably another 15 minutes or so to get it screeded down to the, about this level. So we're into it for about 30, 35 minutes right now. Now I'm going to flip the camera around here in a second so you can see it kind of at a different angle. This is a pretty good shot of the foundation right there. You can see if they had moved that house on, the only access is those two windows back there and there's no way we're getting a truck back there and it shoots through the windows and then the bulkhead what we call a bulkhead which is a little access area on the outside of a house is uh, is right up here um, you'll see it in a minute when I turn the camera around that would be the only other access so there's not real good access to this foundation and we really don't like doing them after the house is on one of the problems with pouring after the house is on other than the access is usually always bad is what we don't like the most is putting a power trial down in the basement when it's all covered over and then the ventilation is horrible even if you got fans down there you know the fumes from the power trial the carbon monoxide always is heavier than air so it always sinks to the bottom right down by the concrete and that does that does a couple things Num number one it's you know toxic for us to breathe that which is the most important thing but it also reacts chemically with the concrete somehow and it just makes the concrete feel funny when you're finishing it. You definitely don't like doing these afterwards. Although, as the temperatures get colder in the winter around here in Maine, and we got to add heat to do these, you know, we add, we do have to deal with it. But when we we don't have to deal with them in the summertime temperatures, you know, we want to pour them all like this if we can. That little pipe there on the left is for radon gas so they'll pipe that the radon pipe up through and then there's one more little pipe in the back you might see that's just a floor drain and we were just hired like we're working for the foundation contractor here we were just hired to come in and pour the floor and finish the floor we don't we don't design the concrete we don't spec it out um, this is how it was specced 3500 psi concrete with fiber mesh and low air entrainment in this we we usually add just a tiny little bit of air in it it helps with the bleed water but uh they just they put in this inch and a half crushed rock for the base they got drainage on the inside of this 
and that's it they didn't want the vapor barrier down just pour the concrete right over the crushed rock and they were pretty confident that it was going to stay nice and dry again we don't really have a say in that we're just here we're just here pouring and finishing the concrete like they ask us to Let's see how that Viber Creed works out. It works pretty good just having one guy. We'll, you know, we'll get it down to a certain point and then, uh, and then we'll get rid of the, the vibrating screed and we'll just use the little, four, well, not little, but the 14 foot magnesium hand screed to finish this off with. See Eric's pulling a lot back. We got it a little bit high right there. Just trying to keep keep the concrete nice and level and you can tell you can tell when you're screeding this by looking at both ends that if the ends aren't touching so they're not leaving a tiny little line as you're screeding this with this power screed then you got a little bit of high you got to set it back and make sure you get it down the screed down good so you don't have a hump in the floor See right over there. I wanted to make sure that spot was perfect, so I had to go over it two or three times. And this is how we get rid of it. We just send it up over the wall. That thing doesn't weigh too much. It's probably 35, 40 pounds with the battery in it. There's not a, a ton of weight to it. It had a 12-foot rod on it too. Now we got the 14-foot hand screed, and Eric and I are just going back over that one spot, making sure it's perfect. As we're coming up, that little that little jog in the back is what we call the bulkhead. So set the house down on the higher part of the foundation and then they'll build a little what they call like a little dog house over that back part. And that gives them access into the basement from outside the house. And that's how we kick screed it when we don't have the battery powered screed. We'll just screed it by hand like that get rid of that thing get it bull floated and then I'll use a little five foot screed here you can see how I finish this off and how we jump out of here but I don't know I mean all in all even even dealing with a bunch of problems you know we don't it's not like we're gonna cancel the job because a couple guys call in sick you know we gotta figure out a way to to still get it done because we got other people planning on being here tomorrow you know getting this prepped for the big crane to come in and the two two sections of house to come in you know they build it in two sections 40 feet long by 14 feet and then the crane is going to set it in place you know they got a big crew that's going to show up here and and get that all set so we're, you know we're not going to hold them up from doing that just because we're a couple guys down but let me know let me know just if you guys get to deal with that stuff a lot we don't that's not anything we usually have to deal with Eric here he's a he's a summer worker you know he'll work for 10 weeks in the summer because he's a school teacher but then once Eric goes back to school usually at the the last week of August then it's just me Darren and Luke for you know nine a good nine months out of the year just the three of us but we do have some other guys we can call on every once in a while if you've watched some of my other videos you've seen Harvey come help us and Jim come help us if we got something really big where we need an extra hand well that's how I finish that off I use my big mag or big mag I it's called a Darby I get all the edges mag you know we have a chalk line around those edges we set with a laser and then climb up the ladder pull the ladder out try to fill in the little holes with a come along and then that's going to be it until we get the power trial down here well there two guys 40 by 28 with a bulkhead that was about 14 yards really humid today we're we're just soaked from sweat it's not like crazy hot but it's really humid Darren's out today, Luke's out today, just uh, we had to get it done. This this is actually a double wide house, so the house is coming in a couple days, so they really need to get the floor done, though. We got her. Now we just got to hang around and power trial it. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.